Oh, you're so good at that. Caught him asleep. Oh, there the we cable. go. He is the cable, man. Mm -hmm. I know. All right. Good evening, everyone. This is um, Tuesday, March 8th, FinCom meeting. We have a lot of um, budget-related items to talk about tonight, as would be expected this time of year. We also have a reserve fund transfer request to deal with. Talk about the warrants coming out and um, start talking about the annual report. And um, another big item is the financial policies and procedures update updated to our um, document that we want to vote on that tonight. I think I'm going to move the agenda around, though, because we also have the police chief and the fire chief here to talk about some things going on in their department relative to the budget this year. So if that's okay with everybody else, we'll let them go first. Mm -hmm. um, Zinski, you want to start off and talk about the latest plans for the sure. proposed fire station? Um, so we're looking to request that the um, funding for design nice. be transferred to the... Uh, special town meeting as opposed to the annual. Um, <coughs> by doing that, it gives us the ability to... Um, yeah, one more? Yeah. Um, it gives us the ability to uh, basically bring the design uh, forward by about four months. Um, and with a proposed uh, construction date of the uh, fall town meeting. Um, by moving it forward and bringing the construction into the fall, uh, it would give us the opportunity to start the construction that much earlier and hopefully get the equipment back indoors before a second winter. Um, basically keeping a multi-million dollar fleet um, you know, back into a warm environment so we're not uh, worrying about things freezing. Um, you know, try to optimize the time frame. Um, also by having uh, the uh, ability to work through the winter they need to gut the entire facility anyway, so they would have some indoor work mm -hmm. as well. So did anything change financially that made this possible that we didn't have in there before? I don't know why we didn't do it this way before. The reason we didn't do it before was to allow the designer um, at least a year to, to get um, documents drawn, um, bids, the bid process completed, um, give them a year to come to the next annual town meeting with complete bids in hand. Um, financially, it doesn't really put any pressure on the town. We're still planning on placing the debt in fiscal 2020. It does put a lot of pressure on the designer, whoever is selected as the um, designer, um, that, to get those. That our queue gets posted gets tomorrow. Posted tomorrow. Yeah. Um, so, all indications are that we, you know, it, it should be a problem to get um, actual bids completed and in hand for the fall mm -hmm. town meeting in November. Um, but it puts everything on their shoulders. And <laughs> okay, and so, and again, the warrant for for the this one, the special towns meeting is. We're doing the whole thing, or design. we just, do, just the design. Just design. This is just the design. This so. will allow us to have bids in hand for the construction request in the fall. Not done, but I'm So you go to town meeting with an actual price rather than an estimate. Right. <coughs> One of the other things that we, we figured out um, just in uh, talking with uh, Greg Corral um, about the, the, you know, now that it's finally closer, is staying at our facility. Um, since there's so much going on at that location, we are not going to be able to remain at 20 Foster Street during the construction period. Um, so that we found out uh, the chiefs and talked about uh, their location as an alternative site for temporary housing. And what we're looking at now is having temporary quarters behind the police station and uh, writing off the helipad for the year time frame and building a Quonset hut type of a structure uh, on the helipad where we'll keep the apparatus. Uh, we will still have to deadline uh, one or two pieces of apparatus, hopefully uh, maybe at like a highway department, light department, um, where it can stay indoors but uh, have the majority of it there. Um, and hopefully next year is as mild as this winter was and we'll, we'll be in good shape. Yeah. <laughs> Probably not, though. <laughs> Boy. Scott, do you want to talk to the reuse of this temporary structure? So, um, <coughs> one thing that this 
one of the type, type of a, a thing. Um, the highway department is also looking for a temporary structure and uh, for storage of equipment. And uh, you know they talked about a pole barn, and um, you know that wasn't looked at too favorably. So this uh, this structure actually has a 20-year guarantee on the exterior skin and a 50-year guarantee on the skeleton. Um, it, it's uh, we're, we're ballparking it at around the eighty thousand um, eighty thousand uh, dollar ballpark for the, the cost of it, and when it's done done with us for the year, it will be disassembled, brought to the highway department, reassembled for their use for permanent storage or temporary temporary twenty thousand dollars storage. Right, exactly. <laughs> Is that similar to like the uh, salt sheds that the state yeah. has? Yes. It's yep. a fabric, fabric, fabric covered. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, it, and it has conex boxes as the base? Uh, this one this one wouldn't. Oh, well, um, not. Okay. It's, that adds a whole other component and it definitely adds a, a, a bit more of a significant price to it. Um, we, I was speaking with them today. Okay. Um, what we're looking at right now, it would either have the concrete anchors just around the base um, or the they said they'll have, they're going to have to do it with the helical screws um, to the ground. So um, we're, we're going to see what the price difference is on those. Um, they, the issue with the size of it, we're looking at a, a 50 by 80 tent. Um, and when you go to the Connex boxes, it now requires structural engineering mm -hmm. because you need I beams need to be welded to the top of it. You need it. So the whole thing now needs to be engineered. Mm -hmm. um, so they said it definitely changes the ball game and the price. Does that eighty thousand dollar tag include ventilation? Um, it does. It does it includes ventilation, uh, heat, and installation. And installation. Um, the, the the price tag for the tent itself is uh, roughly forty forty five thousand, but since it's a uh, you know, uh, a prevailing, uh, wage. prevailing wage job, that takes care of the rest. <laughs> hmm. So there'll be obviously some uh, repair work needed to the helipad after you put these anchors through the asphalt. It um, it will be if we do it with the concrete blocks, there will not be any issue with it. Um, there may be one area where we'll add need to add a little bit more pavement um, because this area is slightly bigger than the helipad, and um, you know it's something that even Jimmy Clyde said te a temporary pavement and it can just be pulled up when we're done and replant seed. Mm -hmm. And the design teams, you've talked to them, and they're okay with this time time frame in terms of getting something and doing a good job for you and not rushing things along. And yes, they said it is aggressive, but it is doable. Um, <coughs> we tried to have discussions with them to see if this was even practical. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, in the discussion, they said it's it's it is practical, it is doable, but it is aggressive. Um, but it definitely buys time as far as having the ability to potentially start in November, um, depending on how the winter goes. They, they may be able to get the foundation in, mm -hmm. but work on the main portion. Uh, they could even get steel work in, and then uh, once the ground is warm in the spring, then they'd be able to pour floors, but they wouldn't pour floors in the winter. Okay. So again, the time frame. So for this town meeting, we're just talking about the design. Just design. So the fall town meeting, people would expect to vote on actual building it. So that's in November. November. So then you would just be working to go as soon as that ha would happen. That's okay. what you'd be looking for. Bids that's in correct. hand at that point. That's the, that's the same timeline we when we did the PD building. Okay. Spring town meeting, fall town meeting. So you, you, you go into special in October. special town meeting. Or are you going to town meeting? First spring. Special. Spring. This spring would be special town meeting. Special. Yeah. Special. Spring special. Just to be clear. Correct. Right. right. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just but to give us the ability to <laughs> yeah. award design sure. the next day. Yeah. yeah. And again, that the, the um, RFQ, the request for qualifications for <clears throat> design services, will be released tomorrow. Um, the plan is uh, you know, all the deadlines line up with town meeting so that we will have actual, you know, prices in hand for town meeting. So. Mm -hmm. We're not saying we estimate that the design cost will be 530. We will know exactly what the design cost will be. By Springtown meeting? Yes. Yep. Not construction, design. Just design. Oh. Just design. Oh. I was going to say, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> and, the, and the estimated cost of design is? 
uh, roughly 530. Which is what we've talked all along, more or less, right? Yep. Yep. So this will be like winning an election. Like you, if you get voted in at Fall Town Meeting, it's like you'll be like the White House. You're out the next day, right? You got to go the next day and start packing. Something like that. <laughs> we'll be packing before that. <laughs> or prepping. Hoping. I should say. Well, Scott, Scott did a nice little timeline. Uh, yeah, I, I saw it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. And then, um, what is it? I think Tuesday, March, I think that's March 29th is a Tuesday. Um, we're going to have, there'll be an open house at the fire station. Um, they were, the abutters will all be there, um, people from the church, and it'll be open to the public come in for uh, an update, you know, status, go over the, the timelines and what they can expect to see. This puts us voting on the construction cost at a fall town meeting instead of the annual town meeting. Which is what we Which is generally what we normally would do. Right. Fall town meeting was not nearly as attended that's correct. It is the same timeline that we did for the police station in 2010. Well, for the police station, we took about eight years to get there. <laughs> <laughs> the other um, benefit to the, the fall in getting the voters out is that it's the presidential election. So you'd have, uh, if it's anything like the, the primaries, you'll have an increased voter participation with this election, so you can get more people out to vote for it. For ballot voting, you're talking about? Are we doing ballot voting? Is that also a discussion still or not? Um, still in discussion, but it's the last. It's, it's the recommendation from the finance, finance department, department, right? And the finance committee from the last. Yeah. Vote. Can you have a couple of members of the finance committee left from when that vote was taken two years ago? I don't know. My conversation with the chair of the selectmen today was his understanding that was not the case, so this would probably be a surprise to him. I. I with that too. Yeah. <laughs> you should be. You're going to win either way. If I were you, I wouldn't want the risk. Right. I'm not going to argue. <laughs> All he wants is the sign check in the end. <laughs> yeah. a, lot of, a lot of variables going on with the money, and everybody wants everything inside and uh, no votes, and um, it's this and turf fields and all kinds of other things. So, uh, And we're going to lower, and we're not going to raise the 2.5% either. So. Um, well, we 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 had to get squeezed. Made a determination on that once upon a time. We can probably revisit it for those who have changed their minds or are still holding fast. But you know how I feel about that. I do. Well, we continue to have the role of making a recommendation on the selectman proposal, but it's their proposal. Yeah. Statutorily. Based on facts, and we need all the numbers in front of us to be able to make the right, right decision for the town. That's the idea. Okay. All right. Any other questions about this? Okay. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Thanks for having me, no more. Anytime. You're always welcome. Um, as most of you recall, in November, I had uh, put a proposal on my mission budget, or whatever you want to call it, about uh, hiring a, two other patrolmen, uh, or patrol officers for the uh, department. Currently, we run at, uh, at uh, 17 officers, but it's from the top down. And just a little history of how our shifts uh, currently work is there's, uh, there's always two cars on late nights. We try to run three cars on 3 to 11s in, in the day shifts, which is 7 to 3, 3 to 11. But obviously due to uh, vacation time and, uh, well, vacation time, comp time, sick time, and training time, we actually only run two cars on the day shift and 3 to 11 shift. Um, we're minus about 150 days a year where we're down to two cars. And as, uh, you know, speaking as, as chief and the head of uh, the department, I do not believe the two cars is, is, is uh, significant enough to uh, protect this town, especially with the way the town is changing and the, and the growth of the community. And I, I talk about this uh, a little bit because uh, 
you know, the uh, point is opening. That's going to that's already showing us that you know a call volume uh, is already starting there, and it's only an eighth an eighth open. We currently in town have chip shots, pub on the common, and Yangtze River really for liquor serving establishments of any kind. We're going to triple that by the end by November of next year. Um, and many of those, there's at least three of the licenses I know that are, well, all the licenses go to 1 o'clock in the morning. Three of them are actually planning on staying open until 1 o'clock in the morning uh, up, in that, up in that area, uh, especially on Friday and Saturday nights. And the uh, cinema will have late shows on both Friday and Saturday nights. Um, <clears throat> so. You're saying there's a relation between alcohol and your in your room? Activity? There certainly can be. There certainly can be. Hmm. Um, and also just, you know, just, just a simple, uh, you know, 15 Gray Road is coming on online and uh, we're already down there. Uh, you know, people that are close and on top of each other tend to hear with the neighbor, what's going on with their neighbors and make phone calls to us. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm not saying it's, uh, you know, it, it, you know, it's just a fact of life. Yeah. So, with that being said, I went back uh, originally and uh, I went back and really hit my my budget numbers really went back and looked at it, and uh, I'm still advocating for, for the 19 officers, hiring two officers. Uh, I really looked at the budget. I went through basically every piece of overtime we utilize and how we do it, and uh, we hire the two officers. It would then What we would then do is have a sergeant and three cars on each of the uh, 3 to 11 uh, the split shift, which is two 3 to 11s, two day shifts. And the two in the in the straight seven to three shifts that gives us the the coverage for for that shift. Um, it would then uh, avail us to go down one car, no matter what, and still have a sergeant and two cars on the road, which is I think the minimum of what we can do. What is some of the overtime costs that we'll be able to be cut is we'll be able to afford to send people to the training that we currently either have to go down a car or pay them overtime to do. I'll be able to strip a car off and. It won't affect what I have on the street, and it won't affect me having to pay overtime because the person will be just you know trading time for time. Uh, late night shifts still uh, you know is, is still we still run minimum cars up there, but typically other than the Friday and Saturday night issue that'll be coming up, the the late nights really uh, don't have the need uh, for for three cars as of yet. Saturday nights we'll have to look at probably at some point Friday and Saturday nights some overtime possibly from like 11 till 2 in the morning. But, uh, you know, just to get people out in basically out of our town, <laughs> if you will, or uh, get them back to where they're going. Um, so, again, I went back, sharpened my pencil. Um, send these around first. Basically, the good part is uh, on this sheet we can deal with just the uh, the top uh, the top section. Basically, my I mean, to give you the bottom line first. The bottom the bottom line budget for for 19 officers would mean a forty nine thousand dollar increase um, from the town just for this. There's another forty eight thousand dollars roughly in benefits money. If I'm is that correct, what that budget number is right now, roughly. Forty one. Forty one. So forty one plus the forty nine. Well, it wouldn't be forty one additional on forty nine. That wouldn't make any sense. In benefits, health insurance. Benefits. But they, you're saying that would be double it. You would say forty one thousand of benefits on forty nine thousand in salary. Uh, right. The salary is offset with a, a cut in overtime. In overtime. With a cut in right. overtime. Yeah. The actual. I thought you got rid of all your overtime to add add hours to your admin. I don't want to go down that path again. <laughs> I keep, how do we always cut hours and overtime and they never go up? How does that work? <laughs> anyway. He's about to explain that. Huh? I think he's about to explain <laughs> okay. that. Okay. All right. So, if you, if you look, in the, in the fiscal year 2017 level fund budget, we were going to have 183162 in overtime. 
Um, on the year 2017. Wait a minute, slow down, slow down. Let me, let me catch up with where you are here. So, fiscal year 2017 level funded budget would have $183,162 in overtime. That's uh, what, salaries and extra coverage? Correct. Oh, thank you. Third line, third uh, Third, sorry, yeah, third line down in the yeah. uh, almost in dead center. <coughs> Far right to the fiscal year 2017-19 office of budget, <coughs> the, you see the overtime is down to 130, 589. So that money is shifted down into into salaries. So basically, basically what happened is uh, is I cut one full um, person's uh, salary, if you will, out of overtime and shifted it down into uh, um, into there, and I needed an additional uh, 49, which is basically another year salary. Uh, for an employee uh, from the town, plus the the forty one thousand, which is the benefit package for for two individuals. So it's ninety k net. Right, roughly ninety k net is. <coughs> um, <coughs> by doing this, um, again, I believe uh, having crunched it with the deputy and the rest of the command staff, we would be able to. Uh, I would be able to sustain the cut in overtime because that, you know, was a concern to me because I'm in, I'm a little bit over um, where I should be right now in overtime costs, but I also ran short from last July until January before I got back actually even to, to 17 because we had two people in the academy and uh, another patrol officer out on maternity leave, so I was running three short. So uh, my confidence level at hopefully being a full strength with extras. Um, I'm, I'm pretty confident in uh, in the overtime number holding up uh, well because I don't envision having to fill very much at all on the uh, three to eleven and the uh, and the uh, day shift. What's that going to do for your uh, employee morale? They don't want to work overtime, to be quite frank. Um, it, times have changed with the uh, the millennial employee and things of that nature, and uh, most of them come in and. Uh, I think you know the town is is uh, you know I'm not saying they're overpaid by any means, but the town treats them right, and I think uh, the employees come in today and try and make their life built on you know what their their base salary is and things of that much more than maybe years ago people did, and uh, they're choosy about what they want to work. It's really tough when uh, there's overtime on weekends. Uh, the deputy will tell you it's a, it's a fight to fill it. Nobody wants to work. Uh, a Friday or a Saturday or a Sunday anymore. Or Notice even the details when you look at the folks doing that. It's not your uh, full time that are doing it. Town, no. A lot of recognize half the people. Yeah. In, in October, September, October, we were running probably five to six overtime shifts a week, and it would be three to four of them on the weekends, and those were all orders because nobody would sign up for them. Mm. So. so the orders are far worse than. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> likes, That's why I got a ticket. Be, <laughs> you don't want to run into those folks. <laughs> you know, working a four and two schedule, you know, every was it, every five weeks you get a true weekend off. And that worst thing to have happen to you, of course, is you know, you you and you take the weekend off, and my true weekend off now is working for one of you because obviously we have to, you know, we have to, you know, we have to fill the shifts and we have to be at, at you know at uh, minimums. Um, so, uh, you know, I guess that's that's what I'm advocating for. Just a few things, and uh, I have to excuse me because I'm still working on some of this presentation that'll go on um, Monday night for the board because I just actually found out that I was going to get the chance to present. But I just wanted to tell you a couple like area town things and in, in compare to us now. Acton population about 21.5, which is According to Diane Croy right now, we're, we're right around, if we're not at 10,000, we're, we're right there with the addition of 15 Great Road and everything else online. Acton's got about 21,500 uh, individuals. They have 48 police officers. Um, currently, they have two SROs and 11 detectives. Um, now, if you think about that, our town, you know, with our new business district growing up, our mall, things of that nature, currently we run, we run one detective, one SRO, and everybody else is, you know, um, on the street. Uh, Westford has uh, 48, and I should say, Acton is adding nine more officers? Eight. Eight more officers, right. Um, Westford is at 46 officers. Um, their population is a little larger, about 22-3. Uh, 
They have six detectives and two SROs, you know, within their community. Town of Ayer has 7,900 uh, uh, residents. They're running uh, 18 officers, two detectives, and one SRO. <coughs> and the town of Groton is 11,000, has 19 officers. Uh, they're trying to get another one. And I should say the town of Ayer has asked for two more officers this year and two more dispatchers. Um, and the town of Groton has 19 officers, and in that there's two detectives, one SRO, and they've asked for another officer this year. When I, when I look around at some of these other towns, and I'll, you know, I could say in the stuff in yes, and Air and Rock certainly do not have the kind of business uh, population and the, and, the, and the business draw that we have, nor do they have four exits off the highway, which makes Littleton a little, a little different than most. Our transient traffic is, you know, astronomical in the community. The pass-through is astronomical. I would, I would say to you that uh, the last time I looked, probably 90, Four percent of our arrests are not residents of our community. They're, uh, you know, they're either OUIs, they're either, they're either, you know, there's drug arrests, any kind of the larcenies, B and E's. They're, they're not residents. They're, they're, you know, and we have a, a unfortunately a very convenient community with, you know, two exits off of Route Two and two exits off of Four Ninety Five. Um, I think you, I think you all know me, know me well enough to know, you know, my 34 years here, and my last, uh, you know, 13. <laughs> Or 14 in management that I'm, I'm not someone who goes about lightly when it comes to spending the town's money. Um, when I ask for it, I believe there's, there's a definite need. And, and I will tell you, I'm, I'm uncomfortable on many nights when we are down to two cars. I believe it's a safety issue for the town. I think it's a safety issue for the officers. We're dealing with more and more mental health issues. It's a, it's a, almost a daily occurrence now that we're, we're section 12 ing people, which is sending them to a, the mental health facility on a weekly basis, yeah, you know, both the police and fire, it's become a, it's become an epidemic. You know, it's it's in our in our community, you know, there's an opiate problem, there's a mental health crisis, and that's mm -hmm. I think everywhere, you know, Canada, the state and 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 different things, you know, and their infinite wisdom has uh, basically shut down most of their uh, facilities, and they're mm -hmm. they're putting more and more uh, people or you know uh, persons with uh, challenges out in the community and. Uh, and we have, we unfortunately have, be, have become the uh, you know I guess we're the last resort you, we're, you know where were people are turning to and you know I, I would say to you you know since I've been here since 1982 that you know back when I first started it was all about police law and order arrest we are as much a social service agency now as as, as you know a law enforcement agency anymore um, you know uh, and, and that's just uh, you know in a community like this that's that's what we do. I got to say, Chief, uh, <coughs> my wife is watching on TV and she just texted me and said, get the officers. <laughs> <laughs> well, I get to look at it from a unique standpoint, too. I'm also a resident, and so I go home after doing the schedule and knowing who's out on the road and how many's out on the road, and I sit there and expect a phone call for me to come in and, and assist. Um, our two detectives do, uh, the detective and the SRO, do live in town too, and they are always make themselves available for, for call-ins and, and if there's any, any need for assistance. And how regularly does it happen, Deputy? How, how regularly does that happen with you? Uh, the detectives, got, you know, they're basically the first line and stuff like that, but I still do receive calls, whether it's questions or, you know, uh, should we call in extra people? Um, it, it, it happens. Uh, it's pretty. It's fairly times. frequently. It's you know. It's one of those things. It'll happen ten times this week and it won't happen again for right. for two weeks. You know. It, it just depends on on what goes. But you know, we both. You know, I think we both both. You know, constantly. Uh, you know, it's part of our job. We receive calls at home, but the detectives, the detectives bear the brunt of that, especially because they both are our residents. You know. And Helps, uh, you get a call for a missing person and you only have two cars on, there's nobody else covering the rest of the town. Right. So they call the detectives in to try and handle that issue so we can get at least one patrol car back doing patrol. And I'll tell you, you, make, you guys make it look like there's a lot more out there because every time I drive through town, I always see the well, police you know, cars. You do I a mean, good we, job yeah. with I making to, it look I like you're bigger than you really that, are. You know, and, and this is you know, kind of my term. I'm, I'm very big on flying the flag. Yeah. And get them out in the neighborhoods, get them out in the downtown area, because you know that, that certainly helps, you know. Yeah. And you try to. And just one other quick thing, I, I wanted to go over, for instance. Um, 
So last year we had just under 300 car accidents in the community. Wow. So when you hear about 300 car accidents, you think, okay, what's that really mean? So typically it means a half an hour on scene for two officers typically. One getting the paperwork done there on the scene, the other one, you know, um, directing traffic. So there's 600 hours in time that the cars are idling or sit. There's another hour's worth of paperwork for an accident for one officer. Mm -hmm. So there's 600 hours of time alone that that one officer is actually gone. So when you think about it, you know, that's 15 weeks worth of time that that officer is gone. 200 arrests, same basic thing, half an hour on scene typically, that's 200 hours. Another two, hour, two officers in booking, it's another two hours because it's required under the accreditation policies and the department policies. When you're booking somebody, it's the two officers in. So there's 400 hours tied up and typically another hour and a half minimum on paperwork. So you can see what also happens just extrapolating out the, the work that we do because you know now in the, in the day and age we live in, um, everyone lives by paperwork. Got to tighten um, up that you know, paperwork. Uh, you, know, <laughs> you know, between accident reports and you know a, a domestic situation, you know, can can take three or four hours to handle in this day and age. Between calling on call judges, two on nine A's issuing, getting things, you know, it's just uh, so you you know, um, I'm not complaining. It's just it is the world we live in. Um, I believe you know I believe the money would be well spent by the community. I know you know uh, I you know I. I you know, I, I hold the line the best I can. I sharpen my pencil. I just didn't come in and say, I need 90 grand from you and I'm not going to do anything. We're, you know, working with the union, we're scheduling and with other things to try and, to try and make this work because, you know, two people for $49,000, I should say $90,000 extra, you can end up with 4,160 hours of, you know, of, you know of patrol time roughly. And that to me is, you know, is, is what I'm looking for. I think with the town growing the way it is, that you've got to keep up with it. Yeah. Uh, again, I, I think you're doing a great job with what you've got, based on what I can see just driving around town. But at well, some point, it's gonna it's gonna catch up with you. We we haven't actually grown since 2004. We got our 17th back. We were 17 back in 2004. In three years, we just got back to to 17. Yeah. Uh, well, three years ago now, and. Uh, you know the, the need the need is there you know that's all I can tell you you know my optimum level to get to quite honestly would be to 20 because then I could have a full-time SRO I could have two full-time detectives and be able to stay like this but obviously right now my key is patrol mm -hmm. this patrol is where you know, the, lack of, the rubber meets the road and that's you know that's that's the meat that's the that's the beast and, you know that's what I want to uh, protect so to your point Mr. Jimmy too you say you see him around all the time and stuff, and I like that. But if you're living in a neighborhood, you don't see him in the neighborhoods as much as I'd like to see. Um, I'd like to see That's the cars good. driving through the neighborhoods, but they're concentrating on the business areas and the high traffic. And we do still respond out to 495 for car crashes and everything else until the state police gets there. Mm -hmm. And we stay until our fire department leaves so we know um, they're back safe. You know, this, is, this is nothing against the state police. We know how to protect our, you know, our scenes with the fire department. We work together well. Not that the state doesn't, but you know, unfortunately, we're we're also we hit in the state police district where two districts join, where uh, C4 and Lemonster and A3 and uh, uh, Concord join. So we're kind of semi in a little bit of no man's land because the A3 cars are down on Route 2 and 128, and C4 cars are you know up on the upper end. And, so we're 98 percent of the accidents out there. I would tell you we're the first. You know, we are the first responders to those. Now they handle the paperwork and things like that. Still, right. you know, they're tied up there for a certain period of time until our until our FD clears and the ambulance clears. Now, the selectmen that haven't yet made a Monday night. Monday night. Okay, yeah, that's what I was told. Yeah. At least that I would be presenting. And we'll Monday. we'll be jointly meeting with them. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I uh, I certainly hope. Uh, they see the wisdom in supporting this. I, uh, I certainly do. I, uh, you know, we've got a, a lot of good, uh, worthy proposals before us, and you know, not surprisingly, a lot of them are personnel driven. But that's reality. Uh, personally, I think uh, on need, priority, or an ability to, to uh, make the best sense financially, the fire department, police department requests, as well as uh, you know, I think the, uh, the school department requests are. Our most uh, 
most important uh, personally, but in your case, I, you know, I think the wisdom is borne out not just in need but in, in the numbers. So I don't know what, what we need to say other than to convey that to selectmen and uh, hopefully reach a happy joint opinion on it. <laughs> I think safety is important. It really is. Get ready to hire? Would you get ready to hire? Are you likely to get recruits that we've got to send to the police academy, or are you likely to get some trained individuals from someplace else? This is funny you say the deputy and I were talking about that today. We actually have one individual from the community who uh, is actually self-sponsoring the, to the academy right now. Now they haven't through the interview process, so I don't know how that's going to, you know, work out in the end. But at a minimum. I would be looking for uh, one train so they could start immediately. If this individual did pass and got through, who's a, a local resident who uh, you know got his degree in uh, criminal justice and is a local resident, and, uh, you know, and not to segue a little bit here, but this is the first time in a long time that I've had great interest of local residents actually wanting to work for their apartment. And obviously, you know, something I, I greatly encourage. You know, and uh, this is another uh, uh, gentleman who. Uh, uh, you know, really wants to to work for the town, so we certainly would give him a hard look. But so I'd be probably looking to, if he worked out, do one on one, so one started right away, and he would get out in September. So it wouldn't be too bad uh, an overlap for us. How long is the academy? Six months. Yeah, I so. Okay. Okay. I mean, I've, I've said all along that the, the growth that we see in the in the revenues isn't for free. I mean, there's a, the reason we have growth is because we have extra people and extra businesses and so that you, you don't get that for free um the hard part is always just determining where it goes because everybody's asking oh, it so right. i appreciate it and you know that totally anytime we add people that that's also the scariest part well, again, I, know, but know, I, 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 I totally I'm, understand I'm, your I'm position people i can come in and probably get 10 cars out of me that they, easier than i can get 10 people because when a car is done it goes away and goes to the junkyard person <laughs> goes to the junkyard keeps on collecting yeah. <laughs> like keeps on getting gas in still <laughs> Keeps going up, so um, but but I appreciate you coming, and, um, well, and, and you, again, we all do. I mean, obviously, appreciate you're doing a great job, and, and uh, we're very fortunate in this town to have all the services we have. I mean, I, truly. Um, so thank I you. Appreciate your time, and I appreciate your hopefully your support. <laughs> it may help. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. That was going to be harder this year. <laughs> See, if you can just say no to everybody, there's a little bit there to go. I said it was going to be harder. <laughs> I just looked on the second page. Sorry. How long the list is. I noticed you didn't even bother trying to total that up. So you didn't want to get a total heart attack, right? I don't know what you're looking at. Body's going to get it again. Standard. Standard. Pack in here? Yeah, that's all. Oh, there it is. Is that a routing okay, order? Okay, got it. Too many, too many uh, acronyms. Okay. All right, so, um, all right, so that's that. Do you know, are there other things on the agenda for Monday night? I mean, did this discussion of the um, town clerk or any of those ever come up any place, or how, how do those? Um, actually, let me just check my email because I thought I saw something come through from Keith minutes ago the engineer for the highway department is uh, a yeah mm -hmm. that was the other thing right so we are and that's a new head that's a new body too also correct. right yeah. correct it's budget neutral but it is an FTE increase um, so. it's budget neutral but is it fringe neutral well, it's budget neutral in that we're um, oh, yeah. Yeah, we're, because we're, they don't pay for fringes we're transferring anyway, so. it out of out of the roadway budget um, at this point but we know it's the money has to it will be put be. in there, right? Sure. I mean, it's anytime you hire staffing, you know that that increase, you know, goes along. Yep, it keeps on year. giving. Yep. Uh, let's see. Well, while we're waiting, can uh, we make a motion to approve some of these minutes, maybe? 
Keep Fine idea. Moving. That's a good idea. Fine idea. idea. Yeah. Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> I'll make a, uh, a motion to approve the minutes for the, uh, the 2nd and the 23rd. I think I was here on the 2nd. Yeah. I'll second that. Okay. Comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. We got that one done. Thank you. Hey, Bonnie, you got it there, or should we move on? No, I think um, the only thing that's on right now is the, the budget update with the schools. Um, as part of that, you know, that, that discussion, I did mention it in my memo um, that you do have um, for review that the town clerk and the veterans agent assistant um, hours are a priority, um, were discussed last time. Um, they did not make any decisions on that at the last meeting, but... But they didn't even discuss it last night when I was there. It didn't even come up. Right. No, but they didn't on the, the meeting that we had. We discussed the highway engineering. Okay. Um, I did mention it to them, so you're aware of it. Um, do you want me to just give you a highlight of where we are with the budget at this point? Um, sure. Okay. Let's do it that way. Um, so basically, we are still um, working with the school department. Um, we have not received electronic data. Um, I did receive a file, um, a, a paper file <laughs> that was handed to me um, to validate some of the data. Um, I was able to determine that there are some increases that I can validate that are actual increases in expenses such as salary, you know, steps and colas, those types of things. We were able to, to come up with the figures and validate them. There are some other ones. Um, there were water bill increases. You know, we, we adjusted the water rates at the, at the local level. So that has impacted the school because they are a, a pretty good user of it. Um, however, there are other costs that were requested as increases that are not actual increases in costs, such as special ed, um, as an example. Special ed out of district tuition is relatively flat, um, but the circuit breaker funds are higher. Last year we received, just as an example, the tuition out of district was about $2.7 million last year. It's about $2.7 million this year. Last year they received $700,000 in circuit breaker funds. This year they're receiving um, 893000 that they can use. So th there's, there's less that is there for a need in special ed. However, they're asking for an additional 100000 in special ed <coughs> to fund it. And the reason they're looking for that is to not use some of their other accounts. Now, they haven't detailed what accounts they're currently paying for it out of. Um, they're just asking that that not happen going forward and that the, the town pick it up in the appropriation. So again, it's not an actual increase. It's an increase in funding being requested to reduce their use of other funds. Um, I did reiterate that having the, the total spending plan mm -hmm. is really critical in being able to analyze that because I don't know at this point is, if it were school choice funds that were used, is the plan to spend those school choice on something else or is it to keep them for reserves and build reserves up? Um, I don't know that at this point. Um, the only detail that we've received is on the appropriation, um, school choice to a, a degree, and circuit breaker spending. So there's three accounts out of the, you know, 50-some-odd accounts with grants and everything that they have. Um, I don't see that, that we'll get that um, in time for Monday's meeting, so I will be prepared um, to kind of discuss the, the transition from the, the budget scenarios that we've had, which is the 15 budget. The 16 budget that was planned for last year um, and the stated use of funds, the 16 budget that was stated at the beginning of this year, which is different than what was presented last year, and then the 17 budget, just to show that the differences, you know, the, the different iterations as we go through the time. Um, they have uh, revised their request instead of the million 245 that they originally requested. Um, it's a million 132, so it's down slightly. Um, if I use that, number in the current spending plan, um, which includes the, the engineer position, it includes um, the IT adjustments that needed to be made for um, the light department's change on their end and, and other um, augmented services um, within IT. Um, I have a deficit at this point of $365,000. Um, I had originally programmed about $700,000. Um, That's at 2.5%? That's at 2.5%. So, and I'm glad you said that, um, to jump off of that, if 
we reduced the levy increase from two and a half to one percent, it's about three hundred thousand um, dollars that you'd lose. So that deficit would go up by another three hundred thousand um, in the in the one and a half percent calculation. Um, you know, it in the worksheet that I did, the seven hundred thousand that I had originally programmed does support a spending plan that that. Um, would incorporate the use of their reserves as they did this fiscal year. Again, what they're looking for is to not use that in this particular spending plan. I'm not sure if they're going to spend those funds on something else at this point. Um, but right. How much do they have in reserves? How much are they showing? It's a million, that piece of paper they started they with you. a million three this year. Yeah. Um, million three? Yeah. So they'd have to pull out 300 grand of that to make their budget work? If Yes, if we funded it at the level that I at could support, yeah. yeah. And 365 would. Um, but that doesn't incorporate, you know, an increase in police um, staffing, so I'd need to, you know, adjust for that if. Well, so, uh, yeah. So to me, I mean, a couple of the discussion points are, one is, I mean, clearly from my standpoint, if the schools need the extra, they need to be more forthright about where. So if we say we can see the 700,000 and you need a million, then it's, it's, it's on them to show us what that is and not just to say trust me and give me another 300,000 and I, I don't like to be that blunt about saying it but that's kind of where we are from my standpoint but I think it also does raise now we're going to have other things on the table so now when you're talking about not only is it that or not but now you're talking about so do we need police officers or do we need money for the schools now you've got a, a you know there's choices here too mm -hmm. and and you, you know people have got to make some balances and so it gets that much more important that you know exactly what's in those numbers of where it comes to so the town can make why don't we I don't think we weighed in uh, formally in writing to the school department what it is that we're lacking that we would need why don't you know why don't we do that so far we've been nice all along saying you know we've had joint meetings etc please help us along. Help. provide and the information when that they we've been the present at, we've been we present at meetings where they said they were going to provide it and then it still doesn't come through so maybe detailing what it is what's lacking and then what is at stake if we don't get it uh, it's tough to justify this request if you don't provide the following then it's pretty clear for any objective observer looking at it that what we're asking for is reasonable okay. I mean, I would yeah. just suggest that. I mean, I, under, under your imprimatur, I'm, I'm suggesting. Yeah, I understand. Uh, okay. Right. <laughs> With our support. But, I, uh, yeah. I'm fine with doing that. I, we have asked. We get till like, things. Monday for them to, well, you know, otherwise we're ending up, I mean, it's all available. I mean, they have it. They're just not sharing it. It's not, uh, it's not something they have to create. They've got it. Right. Okay, so tomorrow, if you can give the list of exactly what it is you still don't have in electronic form that you need, or, or I mean... Yep, I'll give you simple? the spreadsheet that we gave them previously. Like to say, please fill this out, right? I mean, all we need is that filled out. And this is what we did last year that we said we were going to have this year, right? That we still don't have? Yeah. Okay. And you want it in Excel, not PDF. Yes. Yeah. That would be great. <laughs> okay. Which is no doubt how it was created. They just they had to put in the extra work to get it out. <laughs> so, yeah. Give us a PDF. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, yeah, trouble. there's still so many moving pieces of this, right? Right. I really... Um, you know, once we, we lock down that number, then we'll really know where we where we are, you know, whether we have a deficit or... or so not. let's go back to the 1.5% versus the 2.5%. So where are the Board of Selectmen on that? Um, one of the members at PJ asked that I bring forward mm -hmm. the information, um, right. you know, what that would look like. Um, you know, it will incorporate a, at this level of spending. Um, again, that's the school's requested number. Um, it'll exacerbate the the deficit by another three hundred thousand dollars. So, but have they they haven't had any formal discussion on it other they than other than PJ the asking for it. it. They they you know wanted to have it at the meeting on Monday, so I will I will have that available. Um, you know, and and what that means is it would result in you know further reductions that would need to be made. And 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 it's they're adamant still that it that it has to be the one and a half percent versus the alternative of reducing some of the other outstanding debt in terms of order to get no i don't think that they're raised. adamant on that i don't think pj was was adamant on that i think he's willing to to look at you know if, if there were a surplus if there mm -hmm. were a surplus or if there were an, a, a spending plan that, that could be incorporated with the one and a half percent increase right um and we could use that additional money to pay down the excluded debt it gives the taxpayer a break just to show that detail out mm -hmm. show what they would be paying in actual, as an average, on a tax bill for excluded debt versus applying this, you know, surplus, say, mm -hmm. towards it and showing the savings. Um, 
I mean, I don't know if we want to talk or, or vote or have a discussion on that. To me, um, I mean, one of the key, the key benefits to doing that, besides the fact that it, you're not setting the taxpayers up for a possible big hit down the road, is that it follows in our policies and procedures, which is if we go to 1.5% according to our policies and procedures, we're not in a position to do that because we're not where we need to be for OPEB. Correct. And I don't think that's insignificant. Right. Um, and by doing this, we still get taxpayer relief if, if, if there's enough money and that's how we choose we want to, we want to do things. But we're also still holding to our policies. Right. And it, once until I have a school number, I don't know what the deficits look right. like in future years. So I could say at my funded level that I right. had previous, it didn't look like we had any deficits for a year or two. I, I can I, arrive at the same place as your logic <laughs> from, a, from a different direction. I, I don't think that our my read of the policies, and because I, I don't remember reading it there anywhere, is that this doesn't preclude uh, what the tax rate may be. That's a decision that um, happens prior to the budget decisions, or it's it's on its own track. I mean, the amount of money we have available to spend is subject to what the, the tax rate is set at. So what we do with that money is what the policies are for. The policies don't speak to you know, how you set your, your tax levy. Um, nonetheless, I'm in agreement that as long as we have issues like the OPEB out there and as long as we don't have a specific thought out uh, proposal in front of us to do something less than two and a half, I wouldn't recommend that. I'm always open to entertaining it, but I don't see how the policies, you know, just because the policies speak to how we deal with the money that we have. It doesn't say, you know, how much money to raise. It does specifically talk about about <coughs> about what about this about going under two and a half percent increase. Hey, what's the language on that again? It said you have to raise to the levy until you meet certain criteria. Right. Like five and different it's, things. And it's deficits Benchmark. outstanding and OPEB and a couple of other sure things. Make sure your reserves are in line. Mm -hmm. Make sure you're funding to the ARC and both pension and OPEB. Mm -hmm. Um, <coughs> I don't Will it affect bond policies. reading too? Well, we've well, if you don't know all the policies, <laughs> that's, that's, that's the issue. Right? Yeah, well. it, it pretty much says there's no way because what? you're never going to be yeah. fully funded. Until well, the, 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 the we've gone too far in that direction. That's, that's Can you put not this true. in a perspective I mean, too? It's, it's funding to the ARC in, in OPEB, which if we keep on this current track, we could be there in a couple of years. So it, this isn't out of left field. I mean, we're just talking about funding to the art, which is our minimum contribution that we need to make. So well, okay, now that's that's, 10 that's, that's, that's a different, uh, you know, that, that's an important distinction in my mind because it's not precluding that we can't do this because we'll always have debt to pay, you know, or, or employee yeah, I mean, We're not uh, talking about benefits. funding the whole We're talking about, we're talking about a specific objective that we're short of but we're closing in on and we have a plan to achieve so that's yep. that's fine so then there would be you know this any proposal to do uh, something other than tax to the max would be running up against that you know then there'd have to be a healthy policy discussion of consciously putting aside one policy in favor of a new objective and I wouldn't you know I wouldn't personally support that but I hate the notion that you know we've got policies that prevent you know, people from making those kind of policy distinctions. Unattainable. Yeah, unattainable. Yeah, the intention I think was good, but uh, for me, what's running through my mind, and maybe you guys can help clear it up, is what is what is dropping the levy by one percent mean to the average taxpayer? That's that's fifty dollars. Uh, the question I was just going to ask. Right. <laughs> it's fifty if bucks. It, it, it's it's a fig leaf for the four hundred dollar increase they made back in December. When they and, and the, the, uh, <laughs> right. the yeah, yeah, that's that's the what it is. It is. If you don't do that consistently, you're just going to whack them the next. Yeah, time. yeah exactly. Yeah, really. So it's going to go. It's going to come back down next down year. Right. Double it. Yeah. Yeah. So all you're doing is kicking the can down the road. Yeah. For no good reason. But if you apply it towards the excluded debt, you're still raising it, but what you're doing is you're reducing the amount of, you know, additional beyond two and a half that you're, you're so you're, you're effectively saving the taxpayer money in their pocket. Um, you so still have to make the cuts to, right. to move it's, the it's money the, from inside mm -hmm. out. Yep. Right. Yeah. So what's the dollar figure? For Three, 300000 right? average guy. Oh. 50 bucks. $50. <clears throat> 50 bucks. 50 bucks. Wow. Yeah. That's got to be said. 
Yep. Right. No, it's, it's definitely the tax yeah, classific upset the tax classification price. shift had an impact, I think, of about what three hundred dollars on the average home, or was it closer to four? I can't remember. The difference between it was what Jim wanted and what Paul yeah. wanted was thirty dollars. Oh, oh. I think you're right. I think it was yeah. Okay. Taxes just, go up anyway. Yeah. So okay. I wasn't. Uh, so it wasn't that was big of a deal. It was minimal. <clears throat> How about the difference in the savings for, uh, well, we'll say IBM? Well, I don't know what, what IBM's tax bill would be. Yes, they did. They did benefit from it. Yes. Uh, no doubt. But this, I don't know. I, I, I would expect this to be more somebody we're running for re-election. When he said he wasn't running for re-election, I'm like, why are we doing this? <laughs> At least I could understand. <laughs> I think they took a beating for that. Uh, uh, decision. Yeah, legacy, huh? I guess so, huh? So anyway, I, I do think, and I, and I said this last night, and, and I do agree, it's always good to have somebody pushing the envelope and saying, should we or could we, and have the discussion. I, I do I think I'm that glad that's we're at a point that I that's agree. now on the table legitimately, yep. not as a pie in the sky right. uh, a consideration. Yep. So I mean, you know, yep. I'm, I'm comfortable saying nope not at this time but uh, I'm happy to have it uh, yeah. in the conversation I, think, I, think, I, think I mean I think if it had more of an impact than 50 bucks I, I think it's it, the, I think it's more of a gesture than really anything that's going to be more meaningful to the tax. And again, if, if you knew you're never going to get it back, but the idea that the you know next year you could vote to just take it all back again, it's just like <laughs> right. Yeah, that's true. I just disingenuous. Uh, I, yeah, a little bit. Or <coughs> you know, anyway. We need a stimulus fund. <laughs> <laughs> um, All right, so that so that so that's part of the discussion for Monday night, anyway. Right. Okay. The other thing I just wanted to um, bring to your attention is that the selectmen did at their meeting vote to support um, including the position of highway engineer in the budget mm -hmm. again, budget neutral through transfer from um, the roadway funds. Um, I did provide the memo that um, PJ had asked for some specific financial data to support. The request and you know what what reductions would we have in other accounts? Um, so Jim Clyde and I actually sat down um, along with this. I didn't give it to you because I would have killed a bunch of trees. But um, in the in the budget reductions, the estimated reduction of seventy three thousand. That's seventy four thousand. That's here. We actually went through a year's worth of invoices um, with relation to roadway accounts, with um, wastewater treatment. We picked out very specific items that we were extremely comfortable with that in-house engineering would do. Um, construction, um, you know, bid, bid management, um, some construction oversight, not complete reduction or elimination of construction oversight, but some number of hours um, for particular projects. That was very reasonable. Um, and, you know, Jim had this experience with Eric working here, so he knew, you know, what Eric was doing when he was here. Um, mm -hmm. So this is this seventy-four thousand dollars represents uh, an extreme comfort level. It's not all inclusive. I'm sure that there are other items. Mm -hmm. I just I'm not an engineer. Um, <laughs> to go through every you know every department would okay. would have been kind of exhaustive. <coughs> but I do want to provide you that. Um, what else? I think that that's it. That's the only other staffing. Um, change so I will wait to see what the board um, decides on with police review next week um, and see where we go for that. So, this is one of the things you'll be providing yes, again at the next meeting. Yes, so we will hold on to this unless you've got an update. But I might, you know, that. just update it, but um, yeah. you know, I might take out some of the staffing stuff, the engineering invoices. Um, but yeah, I, I will have the same information with the other department requests, and I'll highlight the ones that have been approved or in consideration. So, do you want to talk about capital now, or should we talk? Should we do the the financial policy vote discussion first, and then vote on that, and then have the capital discussion? We might as well do the policy stuff. Hmm. Do the policy stuff. I think so. I just it just it just it'd be more useful to have that, especially if we voted on it to have the next discussion. Is what I'm thinking. Make it a little bit cleaner. Thank you, Steve. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Steve. We should have gotten these before. I know they did go out by email prior. Mm -hmm. I mean, not in the last few days, but before the last meeting, I think. We're going to talk about it then.
Nope. <clears throat> uh, I'll take one just so I can look at I have two screens. <laughs> committee met and approved these changes back in January, I believe. Um, and there was just a couple of sections that were impacted with changes, so that's all you have in front of you right now is, is those sections that change. So section 12 is the biggest one on the free cash section. <clears throat> and this is a red line version, so you can see the, the changes, what we did. Um, starting with um, letter C, let me back up here. So the, the intent of, of the changes that we did, um, again, we have the 5% uh, minimum that we need to, to keep in free cash to the operating budget. We have a 7.5% benchmark number, which essentially says anything over that 7.5% can get spent in some other categories, and they're listed here between C and G, I believe, G and H. Um, so those categories get to spend over the benchmark piece. And maybe when I'm going through this, we could use the, the little chart that uh, we have here, mm -hmm. maybe to follow it just a little bit better. Um, so stabilization, stabilization reserve hasn't changed any. It's still 5% uh, of, of the operating budget that we need to keep as a balance in that account. Um, we're adding more each year, which is great. Um, we'll probably with this addition of the 100,000, we'll be a little bit over $2 million sitting in stabilization. But it's still just we just still fund that to the five percent. We don't we're not putting extra money into that one and so on. This is no, just so a standard. This is right, standard. Right this is right. so before we get to the yeah. Okay, action, I just wanted so. to clarify that. And also, this is really just our policy. This isn't a state law or anything like this. This is really just a policy just thing. Our policy. Wow. Okay. Good. Yes. Uh, the second one is capital projects, and and we take uh, up to two and a half percent of the operating budget funding out of the free cash, and that's $1,132,000 for this year. Okay. Now starting with letter C, the OPEB additional contribution. Now this changed in the policy. <clears throat> this is taking amounts, appropriate amounts up to 20% with a minimum of 10% of the excess balance of the benchmark. So this 634 is the 20%. This is the max. This is the 20% OPEB additional contribution. And the idea behind this, the way, the reason why we have a minimum amount there mm -hmm. is <clears throat> that we step through these in this particular order and we're not skipping anything um, simply to, to fund something else. So, you know, the way the policy is set up is to take care of stabilization, take care of our capital, and to fund OPEB as the big, major three big things that we're going to do. But up until this year? Up until this year, we have not gone past B. We haven't had the funds to go past B. We do this year. Okay? <clears throat> so the so 634 is 20% of the excess over the benchmark. So we have to fund that if we if we go forward we have to fund it a minimum of three hundred and seventeen thousand, but the maximum is six thirty four. And this is over and above the appropriation. We drop down into D and this this and I'm sorry, one more thing. So when we do this relative to the other conversation, by putting extra in here, this gets us closer to the arc. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so that's enough, but that's another part of the puzzle we need to mm -hmm. reiterate, right? Okay. Closer to the arc, but it's also I mean, to, to fund the arc, you need to consistently I, I understand to certain levels. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> so then the next one, in item D, 
<clears throat> has been changed to 60% um, with a minimum of 30% of not only regular stabilization, but now including debt exclusion stabilization and capital stabilization. Not meaning that we need to fund all three pieces, but we can do 30% to 60% in any combination of those items. So in the example that we have, we didn't fund um, anything to regular stabilization, but we established the debt exclusion stabilization and additional funds to the capital stabilization of 951 a piece, which is adding that together is the 60% of the balance. So that's maxed out. This whole example is maxing everything out. <coughs> okay. And then once we get down, we have our balance. Um, we have our benchmark balance, <coughs> which is three million three ninety-five. So we can spend the difference between the three million three ninety-five and the four million twenty-nine, which is six hundred thirty-four thousand, which is the twenty percent of the excess balance, or additional capital, or additional funds into capital stabilization if you so desire. So those are the, the changes um, in the verbiage that we have here. G changed <coughs> to say appropriate amounts, appropriate amounts up to 20% of the excess balance of the benchmark identified in item uh, E to fund additional capital items. And you can see from the, the one pager here with the numbers in it that obviously this year is, the, is a huge anomaly, oh, yeah. you know, and then it, it goes down to much more. And, and this example that we, we show here assumes that the following years we're regenerating free cash to that million and a half level in new funds coming in, <coughs> which supports the spending plan that you see, which is, again, in each of those successive years is maxed out to the policy. And we went through several iterations of this and based on different ways of doing it, in some cases, because if we put too much this year, then the next year you don't have enough rollover, so then you're short. And so we didn't want to get into that mode again because that's obviously counterproductive. So we felt comfortable doing this, that we were able to take care of this year and other, other years it might be this way and even going forward, put some, some significant money away for some of these big capital projects that are coming down. So we wanted to show something that, like Betsy said, something that was going to be sustainable for, for the years to come. <clears throat> so let me ask this question. Um, so I'm looking at, I'm looking at C with the red lines, and I'm, I'm fine with that. It doesn't really look like there's any risk there. You know, where instead of saying we're going to have 10%, we're just going to 20% with a minimum of 10%. There's really not much change there. But when I look at D, other reserve additional contributions. Uh, to appropriate amounts up to 60%. So we're going from 10% to 60% with a minimum of 30%. That's a 20% increase. I'm doing my abacus in my head here mm -hmm. and figuring that right. Is there any risk of, of moving it up that high by saying there's a minimum of 30% versus keeping the minimum of, say, 10% So in the policy? Risk? No, because it's going to stabilization, first of all. So okay. vote in, vote out, town meeting. Right. Um, with specific items. Second thing is you need to get down to that level. So like we said before this, this is the first year that we're able to even go below B. Right. So if we, if we get to D, it may not be 30% then. Is that what it could that's be it, it could be because of a very small of a very small right. number. And, and okay. in reality now that I'm starting to get it. the minimum of thirty is also basically the minimum of thirty is to go to E or F. You could still we can still stop at C if we wanted to. Right. Okay. okay. So that's the other thing. It's just eighteen the and gate. nineteen, Greg. Sixty percent winds up to be sixty eight thousand dollars. That's not much. Right. Okay. That and it sense. doesn't mean you need to do that. Just leave it in free cash. Just leave it in free cash if you want. Okay. All right. I understand that. I'm comfortable with that. Thank you. 
so for fiscal 17, um, basically it's it's showing that between these this million nine in um, D between in this example debt exclusion stabilization and capital stabilization plus the 634. That's another it's two and a half million dollars basically that just north of that that you could appropriate to reserve to plan for future projects. Um, so that's you know that's a good thing. That's a good do. And keeping our reserves nugget. intact, this is keeping inside money that you can use to pay for potential outside debt or inside debt, depending on which pocket you put it in. And it's going into stabilization fund, so it takes a little more control to spend it. You know, and get more, more levels of, of viewing and supposed to. So these big projects that we have coming up, we could take some of that money and earmark it for, mm -hmm. exactly. whether it be an athletic field or a fire station or something like that. Okay. Okay. Good. As long as you present, I could use the plan to town meeting and say we're putting this money in stabilization for this purpose. Expect to have a vote to take it out for this purpose and not too distant future. Really shouldn't be an issue. And it's still one time money, so you're not going to like lower right. that. You, you know, you see what happens. Yeah, yeah. It's still a one time. It's a one time. Right? If it's a one -time. was something that was consistent all yeah, yeah, the time, yeah, yeah, that would be, then well, you have different discussion, want. right? Yeah, yeah you, you know, have like different discussion. Bonnie has said many times it's mm -hmm. taken us 10 years to, to get to this point. Mm -hmm. And that's why the number is so big this year. I mean, that's a 10-year accumulation of, you know, a little bit of free cash, a little bit more, a little bit more. But you had some anomalies this year, too, that really bumped it up, Well, too. Uh, yeah, I figured, you know, yeah. we needed to do some cleanup, and right. we did. <coughs> and we had unbelievable permit growth. Right, so it was just... Right. <laughs> right. I can see it when I go driving around town. Yeah, for sure. That's right. Okay, anything, any of the other worrying that we need to really call out to the team here? Uh, next, next section, section 13, stabilization. Um, item B um, is probably the original language that was in here from when we originally wrote the policy 10 years ago. Uh, Look to the finance committee to develop a plan. Um, it was before we had a finance director, now we do, so the you onus know, is on. Bonnie, sorry. <laughs> what does it say that? Yeah, it's Small inferred. Work, less pay. <laughs> yeah. And section 22 on the next page. <clears throat> it's not really a, a verbiage change. It's it's just a formatting change. It's taking a paragraph that was on the last page and putting it into uh, numbered bulleted items. Talking about what debt excluding stabilization is what you can use it for, and so on. Yeah. And finally, with the changes in the free cash section, there's a blend, there's a CPA appendix to the financial policy that was added last year. And there's one sentence in that policy that referred to funding um, <clears throat> Putting, ex, putting free cash into the CPA in order to get the additional matching funds that we did last year. However, there was no trigger in our financial policy to allow money to go into the CPA. So we changed the sentence here to tie it to capital under B and G of free cash. So it's going into CPA with specific capital purposes and coming out that way. That's all the changes for this year. Um, all right, so just I, I'm trying to remember back. I remember when we did that before, and I'm trying to remember again. So, where in this would we be money going to the CPAs? Given this, any of the any items capital that's E for G. So it would just be the other items that we say is capital mm -hmm. on here. Of CPA is rather that's than CPA yeah. All right. So in the discussion last night with the selectmen where we did talk about the CPC funds right. and just as a, you know, an example, we identified the, um, the accounts that we knew of that, that had um, kind of been earmarked previously, the cell tower funds mm -hmm. and some of the mitigation funds um, totaled 345000 and if we wanted to max out, we could deposit 484000 
So there was a $138,000 delta. If that were utilized or tapped from undesignated, we would need to incorporate that in this in the capital plan. in this plan here, this use of um, free cash. So say out of the 634 that we see at the bottom here, you could say 138 of that is going to CPC or not, but it would need to be incorporated in this plan because we still can't go below that 3.3. Or it comes out of the 2.9 up above. And right. Correct. Yep. So, you know, any impact of, of those decisions need to be mitigated here, so. Okay, is this on, going to be on the agenda for the next Board of Selectmen meeting as well? Yeah, because so we're going to have the, the warrant, and they are going to want to talk about funding. Um, the, they did vote to insert the debt exclusion stabilization fund um, mm -hmm. account. They didn't vote a recommended yeah, funding right. level, but that's going to be something that they want to discuss with, with the Finance Committee. I do know that the chairman of the, select, the Board of Selectmen um, was looking to, you know, earmark $2.5 million for the um, alumni field renovations. He wants to do it inside and not have to do a ballot vote. Mm -hmm. So I, I put that out there. As mm -hmm. <laughs> I know. So, and have you run the numbers? I mean, is that possible, that and the fire station? Well, I mean, the, the fire station plan was to, um, the original, you know, plan that was voted by this board was to vote the um, exclusion, but however, to fund it inside the levy by replacing um, the Shaker Lane and high school debt that was falling off with the fire station mm -hmm. debt. Um, so it's kind of a swap. Um, however, to still secure the vote, just in case there were right. financial crises, um, and to give the town the, the most flexibility. Yep. So that plan could still be incorporated for the full debt of the fire station. However, there were some preliminary discussions on the use of free cash to apply it in a debt exclusion stabilization account, and then when we go to place the debt for the fire station, instead of placing seven million, maybe we place half of it. Right, right. Um, so, if instead we're going to use it for alumni field, that needs to be, you know, that needs to be incorporated. I'm very uncomfortable with spending that kind of money on alumni field without a ballot vote. I, I mean, I've come around for the the need for it, and and you know, there are a lot of things in town, but and and I understand that and so on. It's a big deal, though, and I think it's a big change for the town, and I, I'm, I don't know how people feel, but it just seems to me that that's something you really want to make sure people understand is going on. You put that much money away and spend it there without... My, but, my indication today, again, with speaking with the, the chairman, is that um, they are going to look to secure design funds, maybe, at the May town meeting, either in the, the annual okay. or the special, um, and then come back in the fall... We're going to have a big with, fall town meeting, aren't we? Yeah, mm -hmm. with okay. um, mm -hmm. construction. Okay, so that's so we're not looking for the two and a half million. It's not going to be talked at this meeting. At this not province. right now. Okay. Um, we would. I mean, we could, you know, put the money away that's right okay. now All at right, this town fine. meeting. That's um, good. But okay. design now and construction later, which is consistent okay. with the other that's, projects that's, that we have. I'm okay with yeah. that. That brings another construction project at the same time. To a fall we town meeting. A lot. <laughs> yeah, a big town meeting. Absolutely. Fall town meeting, which is yeah. not supposed to be a big meeting, right? Yeah, which is a seven million right. and a two or a two and a half million. Yep. But. Some big nuggets. Mm -hmm. I didn't, I never understood why we moved off of doing the uh, funding for the full fire station this spring's town meeting. Whoa. I thought that's what we were originally were looking at. They don't have the number. They don't have the design. No, I, I don't. I never numbers. saw a, a, an intent to have the full funding. Yeah. It was always design and then construction. We don't. We don't have a full design at this okay. point, so we can't yeah. develop an estimate. Right. And then when's Shaker Lane and, and uh, High School coming off? Um, Shaker twenty twenty and the High School twenty twenty three are the last payments. But they're already decreasing. They're decreasing, you know, every year. But that's, you know, 2020, the debt service will be down to 150000 For what, the high school? As opposed to a million. We used to pay, yeah. We're, we're, that we're, yeah. So, all right, so even for the fire station, we're not, we don't need to have, we won't be having the discussion or make the decision on inside, outside the levy and those kind of things the now. Fall. Not till, it's all till fall. That will need to be decided for the fall. Because Somebody else knew will be chair of the FinCom by then. 
but if it is the fall, then it will be um, it'll be heavily attended, I would think. Yeah. Ballot vote. Uh, yeah, That's why they pay us a big bucks. <laughs> I don't know what kind of salad you're drawing. But I'm not <laughs> Five times as much as you are, Greg. <laughs> Five times zero. Huh? Okay. All right. Well, again, it's all. I mean. How fortunate we are to be in this position, right? We're not having to vote on cuts and so on. It's, it's a cut on if we're having to vote on how we're going to spend our money. So it's a it's a wonderful position to be in, and we should I'd like thank to, a whole lot of people for getting us here. I'd like to go back to this policy stuff for a minute. Oh, yeah, and the thing about the CPC part, I've served on the CPC for a while in its infancy. It just seems as though we're putting policies in play so that we can make more land grabs. And, and I, I mean, I'm all for preserving wherever we can, but I, I don't know if the town is in the position to continue to make these large <coughs> land grabs and keep pumping as much money as we can into CPC or CPA to do it. And I, I, it just bothers me that we're looking to try to continue to put more money in there. I know it's just an option and it may not happen, but... The, the change that's happened policy. within the past year or so is the, uh, and Keith gets most of the credit on that for the uh, state allowing us to um, you know maximize reimbursement based on what money we direct into the, that that fund whether it's from the CPC or other sources so we're basically you know earning ourselves more interest on that money just by putting it there I don't disagree with it but yeah. once it's in there then do we lose control of it can we pull it out for something some other it type of project one the, of those for one buckets. of the things yeah. that's in the bucket, right? So that means we're saying it's going to be used more yeah. than likely for buying, doing land yeah. grabs. Well, some of it has to be record. I mean, seventy percent of it's not not designated for anything. It's not designated, not right? You only designated thirty percent of yeah. it, right? But, but you've also got people on there now that are, I mean, you, you know, that are in favor of, of recreation and other things. It's not just the, the conservation people yeah. on there. Yeah. So. <laughs> Okay. Is that good or bad? I don't know, but <laughs> I mean, I'm going to say mark my words. That might be how we end up funding some of the fields. It may. Uh, it may. It should be. Yeah. And we heard from housing last night. Housing last night, yeah. finally, too. They at least yeah, these, those are relatively small projects. The, the big, the you big know, money projects are well, always the land. And that, and that was the discussion yeah, last right. night, or the question last night was, you know, what we would like is to have CPC have have a plan on this is how much money we're going to spend for. Whether it's it's land or you know debt and other things, where you know what is the so that you know this much goes there and it, it and but we're not. <laughs> I accepted their answer in year one. There was a lot of change in the first right. year, but by year two, I hope they're there. Right. Yeah. 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 So um, I, because you're right. It's, it's I mean, I'm all for getting money. more money, and, and, you bucket. know, but as long as no, it you, goes raise a, you raise a good point, oh, yeah, that's yeah, money for anybody's purposes theoretically, and we're. Consciously putting it into uh, you know a limited restricted use. Yeah, believe me, I don't want to see the town developed any more than anybody else. But that's not always the, you know, yeah. the easiest yeah. thing to say and do. Yeah. Right. Put it on the burden of the taxpayers <laughs> to pay for well, it. Yeah. Takes it off the tax rolls. I mean, we've we've right. preserved a heck of a lot of land in mm -hmm. recent years. Mm -hmm. So it's ten percent of the town is conservation land. Is that right? I think I heard that someplace. Oh, I can't I, that, I'd buy that. Yeah. Yeah. I'd buy that that's number. Wonderful. Okay, so let's get back to uh, voting so Steve can go home. Mm. I'll be looking for a recommendation. I'd vote we uh, vote the Finance Committee uh, or, I don't know, adopt or recommend the policy and procedure proposals as uh, presented. Changes? Second. Second. Further discussion? Questions? I still don't like the CPA. Okay, but, but that, <laughs> all that does is... <laughs> yeah, I'll get over it. I'll okay. get over it. it just and, and, and by the way, I said that it's, uh, the TIF part is separate, right? We haven't got that here. Yeah, no, that's right. not here. That's uh, not, it's, we're it's, probably it's, not going to do that tonight. Separate. But this also doesn't say that any money has to go there, Greg. No, you're right. That. And I understand that, okay. but it does open up the floodgates. So we'll just see what okay. happens. Yep. I'm with you. Okay. All right. So all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks, Steve and Bonnie, for all the work on this, too. I don't think so. I think we got. It's a tough night to talk tip. Yeah, I don't think we're going to talk tip tonight. <laughs> we'll have to do that another night. So we still got to do capital, right? I know my written comments didn't come in until after you wrote round. your last draft. Have you given those any uh, thought or consideration? I haven't done any of them. But you did see them anyway. Yes. Okay. Okay.
Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Thanks, Steve. See you, Steve. Let's get the reserve bed right now. Going Go golfing tomorrow. Go middle. Okay. I think we're also going to talk about capital. I don't know if we want to keep on that. And then we'll, we'll do the re we'll get back. We won't forget the reserve fund transfer. Last time we went golf, it was raining. First? No, let's do let's oh, keep going with budget. Let's do capital. Okay. So last night, the um, I did provide you with a, a draft warrant as it stands now. <clears throat> um, the selectmen did vote to insert some articles last night. Um, they voted to insert the water enterprise fund um, article. I know I think you were all there for that. Um, they also discussed the cell tower leases and the management of those going <coughs> forward. So that that's a good thing. Um, mm -hmm. I, I just want to make sure that we preserve those revenue streams because they are earmarked for you know debt service payments and now with Mill Pond and yep. the other projects. So that that makes me happy. Um, so I guess uh, going to the capital item, it is Article Seven, I think, of the annual, which is on page go to my four. Book here. Oh no. Seems to be missing. Am I missing? You know, yeah. oh my God. Seven's MIA? I don't have an article seven. Let me see if I can. Unless it's <laughs> hidden away in there someplace, or it's from six to nine. Yeah, mine goes from. Uh, <laughs> Put it up on the screen. Yeah, I'm going to try and open it for you here. <laughs> well, I guess I don't need it anymore. That's what happens when I try and double side anything. I <laughs> like it that. You got it. Oh, here it is. No, that's six. Let's, uh, is it buried in six? It's throughout the uh, document. Oh, this is page six. And yeah, page I'm going to, I'll call it up here. I don't have it in here. No, I don't have it in here. Front to back. Page twelve. Seems like you're missing all the even number yeah. pages. Yeah, page like I said, I threw it on there, and I said, <laughs> and I left. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. All the even numbers. Yeah. yeah. Apologize. Well, it's one way to save money. Just cut out half the pages. That's right. Put that doesn't work. Put this sucker down. I thought it was a little small. Yeah, that would. Somebody take a break. And um, yeah, we're just trying to figure it out. Sorry, what's that? No, you. I just listened to myself. No, just. Square foot than you have here. It was my first impression. Maybe Steve goes. Are we talking about keeping you up over there, Paul? Hmm? Keeping yeah. you up? <laughs> well, you're not doing a great job of it. <laughs> so these are the articles that um, that sit as of today. Um, they did vote to uh, insert the facilities needs article, which was the most recent one we were waiting for, but I'll just walk you through um, the article as presented. So Article 7 starts with the police department um, looking for 106,140 for um, police cruiser replacements, um, public safety radio maintenance 12,000, 
um, public vehicle maintenance, 6500 and the plow truck replacement at 37690 There are no changes from the um, budget hearing that you, you attended in November, so these, these should be familiar. Um, fire major equipment repair at 15000 Protective clothing replacement or their turnout gear at 12000 Engine 3 replacement, 35000 um, Self-contained breathing apparatus or SCBA at 15000 This originally started at 300000 um, but we're applying for a grant, so we're hoping that you know the grant funds. So will. I don't want to interrupt, but I mean, are you are these changes to what we looked at before? If not, there's really no reason to go. I was no. envisioning more of a spreadsheet that's showing all the ins and outs and where we are with some of these different things. Um, this stuff looks all the same to yeah. what we right. met on in November. The, well, essentially, they are. Um, with like like I said, the SCBA changed just to accommodate the grant. This E was pushed to the special town meeting. That's why it's italicized. That's a change. Um, so that's on the special. Okay, so that's changed. All right. Um, nothing has changed in <coughs> highway. Nothing has changed in school. Nothing has changed in cemetery, library, or park and recreation. Um, we solidified the facilities and infrastructure. Um, Steve, you'll notice the unit events are at um, 68,000. Right, um, and the 40000 for um, engineering professional services. That's in separate. public buildings, yes. Okay. Yes. Um, so this was in flux at, at the last meeting. So okay. this has been solidi solidified at the 561. Um, stormwater still there at 100000 coming from the Spec Pond Cell Tower Fund, and Castle in the Trees is still there. Um, so the only change is fire station design being moved to the special instead of the annual. And facilities has been nailed down to, to this figure. So. All right. And things like the fire station design is a separate article. And if the turf field is designed, is there will be a separate article? There will be a separate article for that. Um, the fire station design is in the um, special um, yeah. prior to the annual. Yeah. The um, Because of the reduction on the SCBA equipment, we went from 300000 to 15000 We didn't appropriate that 285 somewhere else. We reserved it um, to be appropriated at a fall town meeting if we needed to, if we didn't get the grant. Mm -hmm. um, so right now in reserve, I have the 285000 plus another 173000 which was the reduction in the um, original 734 that was being sought for facilities and infrastructure. So I have, you know, a significant Half amount of money, 407. Mm -hmm. I, I think in total I have 473,000 reserved for fall town meeting. Okay. Now I that mean, could be used if if we got the grant for the SCBA equipment. The chair had asked the chair of the selectmen had asked that we use that 285,000 towards a ladder truck in the future years, just allocated for that. Um, but there are there are um, funding. Um, accommodations made for that. It did not flow to the operating budget. It hasn't disappeared. So it's are they going to wait to order the SCBA equipment until they find Absolutely. out? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. They're thinking that the grant award is going to be sometime in August. Okay. Um, and they so can hold off that long. Yeah. Okay. And nothing, do we, I mean, I think we went through this once before. The library, is there something in here for that or not? There is nothing in here for There's that. There's nothing for the point. library at this nothing. point. And I thought the rule was that they had to have approval in order to, from town, in order to. Yeah, my understanding is that they're either um, looking to come in the fall or the okay. next May. Um, I think more likely next May. Okay. I believe it's yeah. next May. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. Okay. Based on the time, the, the most recent information that I got this week was kind of in, implying that May would be. I think I think the application has to be in, if I recall, in January of next year. Okay. Okay. So let's we'll still keep that. Oh, if there's a lot of big stuff in the fall. Maybe we won't vote on it, but we need to have it as part of the puzzle, right. obviously, depending on where things are. The, you know, the fall will be a, a big one um, because, again, we have that 473 that I have reserved, mm -hmm. not, not allowed to go to the operating budget, mm -hmm. that could be appropriated if we got the grant to, you know, the ladder truck or something else. Some you other still reserve. have, because you had something in here about if there were that, it was going to, you already had it pre authorized or pre stated, right? 
Did you take that out? We yeah we we had talked about it, but we never put it in there for okay. the ladder truck because we thought we we don't want to appropriate it to a ladder truck if we need it for the SCBA equipment if we don't get the grant. I thought you had one of those things where you'd already said if there were time that the these things didn't get the capital plan this year, but if there's money in the fall, this is how we would use it. I thought you had had wording for that already. I made some suggestions okay, for that, and we decided not to go but, forward. With but that. nothing had okay. had materialized out of that. Um, I think okay. people were more, um, at least at the selectman level, were more inclined to save for um, some future things that are coming up, okay, like that's fine. Know, buildings and, I'm, I'm, and other equipment. Okay. Um, so so it's in the fall, get to be a free for all without a process, and that all of a sudden things come out of nowhere that jump to the head of the line and those kind of things. We don't yep. want that to happen again. So in the fall, I envision that, you know, being available. If, if need, not needed for SCBA to, to be appropriated to reserves or, or other projects. These other projects. And possibly, out. you know, snow and ice. Because it's, it's good so far. <laughs> um, it certainly is. Could have a crazy April. We could. You know what you're saying? <coughs> um, I will show you the uh, special town meeting warrant just to go through that. Because we did add the fire station. Mm -hmm. I got that one, so I stayed along later last night. And we got yep. So in the special town meeting, um, I'm not sure if we discussed this at your meeting, but the school committee use of um, insurance proceeds over 20000 So that's for the damage that happened at the high school with the pipe burst. Um, yeah, we discussed that sometime okay, good. ago. All right. Um, Article 4 <coughs> is uh, capital adjustments or changes. So in the facilities assessment study article, we're moving some um, $12,952 from <coughs> the police station um, to the town office and library building to do some paving, um, crack ceiling work here. Um, the police station came in under budget. They're also adding a, a zoning bylaw consulting services article at 25000 I think we did talk about that. Um, and then the fire station you can see is appearing here at 530. And then Article 5 is where if um, we identified funds to go into the blended appropriations, we would do that here in the motions. And then Article 6 is where the Mill Pond Restoration Project um, study is at 67500 and that's coming from the Clean Lakes Fund. Wasn't there a... Um Line item for twelve thousand five hundred for professional services. That's going to be incorporated into Article Two, which is transfers from department line item transfers. Okay. So I'm going to incorporate that as part okay. of public buildings. Thank you. Yep. And I don't have any bills of prior year yet, so it's a good thing. Um, do you want me to walk through the rest of the warrant, or do you want to look through? Um, I don't think it's necessary at this point unless somebody no. else feels strongly about it. I don't CPC, I will need to get, you know, I got some updated information today. I don't know that it's final. They're going to meet again. Um, but it's it's more exhaustive than what you see here. Um, they have some other projects that they've approved um, for community housing. Um, so the it's ones that I like knew that of, last I... night that they yeah. had a yeah. bunch of them. They, they yeah. just did it yesterday, so... It's kind um, of a screwy thing, because some of that stuff should be funded by the state. I mean, that... It, that's it should be, but it isn't. I know. And it never is. It never is, so you might as well just get over it and yeah, do it, the, huh? The state, even back when you were on that yeah, board, they, and I was on that board. They build it in the first place, and then you're on your own for uh, rehabs, yeah, which they, is not supposed to be how it is. They, they, they fund maintenance at less than 50% of what's necessary. And, of course, what's necessary gets worse every year. Right. And, 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 but the other piece of it is like, it's not like Littleton residents get any priority to get in there, right? I mean, that's the other piece of it. You're paying for it, but once they're there, they're residents, but yeah. it's, it's yeah. not a, well, I guess the response right? to that is everybody gets it screwed the same way. <laughs> <laughs> it's everywhere. So, see, that's, that's the thing that's that's that that's you, that's you that's need that's to everywhere. keep reminding people of, too, when they talk about, well, let's expend town funds to build some I, more senior I, housing. I, 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 yeah. Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> We, we're lucky if we get one of our seniors in there. Right, right. Yeah. right. Um, so this will be updated. Um, just so you know, the 1% represents about 242000 so any spending over that is dipping into their reserves, uh, you know, our previous year's accumulations, which they have balances um, of about a million dollars between the different buckets. <clears throat> um, so I will update that when they vote it. 
I must admit, I am surprised people aren't lining up at their door to, to get, I thought that one year when there were all those requests that that would be a normal thing in the last couple of years they haven't, so I'm it is interesting. I'm glad it's not, because that's, uh, huh? I'm glad it's not. I am happening. glad too, but I, I am surprised. And I did um, also provide you with a, um, a copy of the agenda from the alumni turf. Just so you can see the pictures, and um, I, I copied them in color, and they all actually is, are all is there. Is the uh, <laughs> supporting data in there as well, Bonnie? The cost estimate. Yeah, yes. 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 Yep. Two and a half million. Page four. It's in there. <laughs> where the rubber are five, where the rubber meets right, the road. All right, there you go. So I did provide that for you. Oh, dope. Yep, gotcha. Okay, he did a nice job for uh, no money. He did. Yeah. He, he did. Oh, yeah. did. Nobody's arguing that. Nope. And, and it's it, complete. It, it's not just. It's not just putting down turf fields. It's the whole right. complex there. So it's. Well. So I, I think at the next meeting, um, you know, the, the recommendations from the finance committee on the capital items and all the financial, you know, articles will be, um, I'm sure, sought over the next few weeks. Um, we'd like to obviously have your your recommendations, you know, if we can, before we send the um, booklet out, mm -hmm. which will be a little later. So there's, there's time it's to on, do that. It's on the list of meetings when we right. start talking right. about those things, right? So. Um, yeah. And then, you know, funding the reserves at whatever level. Again, they inserted the capital stable. I mean, the debt exclusion stabilization account. We have the capital stabilization mm -hmm. set up. So funding those accounts. We have articles in place. We just need the funding levels. And the, the going in positions, we're going to fund them at the full amount, that, as in that position, as in the sheet that Steve had, right? Uh, that's, I don't think that is a policy decision. Uh, I know that the chair of the Board of Selectmen would like to fund the OPEB at the 10% minimum. And yeah, I'm sure he would. And, and more turf fields. So I think that'll be a discussion for, okay. for you guys for next week. Okay. Um, this wastewater thing that's coming along, mm -hmm. I know we're using some clean legs money and stuff doing a phase one, but what's the cost going to look like as phase two and phase three? And where are they? And are we in all this money we're putting aside? Yep. Are we considering that this guy's going to come up along with all the construction projects? Yeah, the um, the stormwater um, implementation costs are estimated to be able to be met with the 300000 that have been earmarked from the Clean Lakes Committee account. Um, there will be some ongoing costs beyond that in the out years, but they're estimating maybe between sixty and $80,000. Um, so what I'll need to do is start building that into the operating budget in, you know, year three and four. Um, so I've already put it into the spreadsheets in the outward years. Um, but um, we've used Ty and Vaughn to engage in, in trying to figure out what we need to do to meet the requirements of the MS-4 permit. And she thinks that with the 300000 she's put together a budget and a timeline and the, the steps that need to happen in order to be in compliance. Um, and she thinks over the next three years we'll be able to Other do that. Other than ordinary maintenance after it's in place. Right, the, the monitoring. Big, the big nut is up front. Right, it's what the we're doing this year. It's mapping every this over the next three years. Yeah. It's it's identifying all the outlets. It's mapping everything. It's getting you know somebody to go out and actually walk and GPS you know mark everything and then figure out you know the monitoring requirements and who's going to be doing that and which will be the. So engineer. it doesn't <laughs> look like it's a budget buster. At this point, no. You know, we're fortunate. Yeah, um, will this highway department engineer have yes, any? Yes, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> absolutely. A big part of that. But wasn't there some discussion last night about them, some of the initial proposals on that were too onerous and they were backing off a little bit? Wasn't that what I heard? For water. Like, initially, I think people thought, well, the water department, you know, can, can handle it. And they don't want to handle it. You know? No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the, the government. The, 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 the requirements that were coming down on that wastewater, that they, stormwater, sorry, stormwater, that, yeah. that they were saying it was, they were getting a lot of feedback that they were too onerous and they were backing off and they were pushing off on when they were going to actually release them. Yeah, I think they that they're, they may be, you know, giving a little bit of leeway on the timeline, but the, I don't think that the, okay. I don't think there's any thought that the requirements, the monitoring requirements okay. are going to go just, away. Just it just maybe they'll give okay. you right, another year to get ready for it. Okay. Um, but they're not going away. Okay. So, you All know, right. the Clean Lakes Committee has just, you know, been wonderful in their support of this. I mean, this is just... Well, it's their thing, so it makes impact. sense. Yeah. It, it does, but, but you know, again, it's just lucky that nice that's the there. So we happen to have that group there and right. have it funded. I mean, it's not lucky. 
But luck is when uh, preparation meets opportunity, right? There you go. Okay. <laughs> All right, so shall we talk about the, anything else budget-related now or um, the annual report? I guess I'll take a stab at that first probably, right, and then bring it to the team here and, and see what else you want. If you have any ideas of what things you actually want the annual report to say, let me know. Otherwise, I'll take a stab at it. And when is that due? When the – you tell me when the annual report's due. I don't know. So not – not <clears> for <throat> – yeah, I know, a little bit I know when Joe sent it out for PMBC, it was due last week or the week before. Well, this is the report that goes into the um, the booklet, so oh, okay. it's a, it's a little different. More you get a little board. extra time. <laughs> okay. So, okay. So the publication deadline for the report is April twelfth. So, so it's, everything's going to be into the printer and ready to go on the twelfth. So. So that's all our voting on recommendations Everything. and all yeah. that stuff, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, just. So it makes it easier for us <clears throat> for our next meeting. You you need us to recommend or vote on recommending a whole bunch of stuff. Whatever you're comfortable to start. Well, no, no, I'm just saying yeah. issues. Yep. Would you just give us a list of those issues? Absolutely. And I can sit at home and say, okay, uh, mm -hmm. this is going to come up. What I want to say about this, or what I think about this, and I can go back to. Yep. I'll just walk through the warrant. And I'll put it on a spreadsheet, and that way you yeah. can just. As long as we get it in advance, that would be yeah. helpful. Yeah. 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 And, and I apologize can, for the we can um, be prepared, you know. The CPC thing last night. I looked at my email and I was I was in the meeting and I'm like, I know I emailed that out and I didn't email it out. I, I apologize. I thought I sent you that spreadsheet before and we were that thinking was of me. running you out of town. I was like, like how come they don't have their stuff? <laughs> <laughs> it was me. We did have a I know you're backfill position, yeah. so you're Just. safe. <laughs> okay. Um, any other budget discussions we want to have, or we beat that one? To I'm good. Can you go on that one tonight? All right. Reserve fund transfer request. We have one reserve fund transfer request from the um, director of Elder and Human Services, Pamela Campbell, in the amount of six thousand one hundred and sixty-seven dollars. It's to cover sick time for um, one of the Mart drivers. Now, unlike you know, police and fire who have like an overtime line to backfill pos positions when they're out. Council on Aging or the um, the MART program does not. Um, so if typically most of the employees are non-benefit eligible, this happens to be the one benefit eligible employee um, in that particular area. So being out, they do get paid sick time. Um, there is no budget funds to backfill, you know, the shifts. Her only option at this point would be to reduce services uh, in that driver area. So she's requesting um, to replenish the $6,167 so she can keep the same schedule and not cut back on transportation services. Why do I feel like I've heard this before? I emailed it. I emailed it out to the group, uh, what, two weeks ago? Okay, that's, that's, that's why I felt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but we didn't have it. We got it right before the last meeting, right. but it wasn't on the agenda, so right. we didn't vote it. You couldn't, right. yeah. That's why. Okay. I knew I'd heard it. Yeah, before. yeah, so we probably even talked about it, but we said we can't really vote on it because it wasn't on the agenda. So we said we wait till this time, so that's fine. So I recommend approval. Okay. Second. All right. Any other discussion? No. All right. Any all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Passes. Thank you very much. Already did our minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chapney. Anything else? Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye